Welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast, where we talk about fitness, health, and anything to help you become the most optimal human beings. Let's dive into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? How's it going, man? How it's are going we doing? Well. Today, we are going over glycolytic programming. As promised, uh, I said I was going to continue down, you know, teaching a little bit more about the energy systems and how we program it. So this is a video on YouTube in which I'm sharing my screen and you can kind of follow along as I write out uh, some of the information that you're going to want to see about glycolytic. If you're listening to the podcast only, I'll do my best to make sure that it also makes sense for you. But everything, again, as I talked about with the aerobic energy system, this is the practical use of implementing programming for glycolytic. I'm not getting as much into fuel sources and how your body metabolizes energy to be able to produce power. That's more of a scientific lesson that I don't think helps athletes or coaches. Um, even though I could talk about that stuff, maybe we'll save it for different videos. Let's talk about the practical application of glycolytic, which is kind of the middle tier energy system, also known as the pain zone, sucks a lot, horrible, hellacious, like whatever word you got, glycolytic training should suck. So let's get into basically what you need to know for some glycolytic stuff. Uh, so I'm going to break every energy system down the same way. We're going to talk about time. So the dura duration, we're talking about power. We'll talk about work to rest ratios. We'll talk about blocks. And then we'll talk about pieces. And then I'll give some other thoughts and then Joe and I will kind of jump into some practical application of these things. So time, what is the duration for glycolytic? It's typically anywhere from 15 seconds to three minutes. And I have a lot more to say about this as we unpack it from like kind of a coaching perspective, uh, but 15 seconds to three minutes. So above three minutes, we're going oxidative aerobic. Uh, below that, we're in phosphagen, creatine phosphate, those kind of things. Um, so power is going to be anywhere from 40 to 90% of max power. And I think the biggest differentiation I want to make and make sure that people understand is when I'm giving these percentages, I'm very trying to very clearly tell you that it's power. And it's not heart rate. Some, sometimes people think that there's some some sort of like synonymous zone with like, like this is the aerobic zone that's a glycolytic. That can be true, but it starts to really lose um, truth once you get into like a 15 second or 20 second window. Because how are you going to get to 90% of your max heart rate in 20 seconds worth of effort? You probably can't unless you're not in very good shape. So when we're talking about power, we're talking about power output. And I will talk about that more in a little bit. All right, so work to, ratio, work to rest ratios is going to be anywhere from one to three to one to five. So if you were doing, um, you know, 10 seconds or uh, one minute on, let's say, you do five minutes off. That's a one to five work to rest. Um, and then the blocks you're going to do, and this is blocks is the actual programming. How many blocks do you want? You want anywhere from two to three blocks. In pieces, you want three to six. And this is just ranges. <clears throat> And then for the blocks, you're going to want seven to 10 minutes rest between the blocks. So how does that look? It looks like um, I'm going to give a, an example. Um, so just to make it easy, if we were to do 60 seconds on, three minutes off, we are now in the glycolytic zone. So I'm doing 60 seconds all out effort, not all out. I'm at like a you know, 90, 90%, 85% going pretty hard here. I'm going to do that for 60 seconds. I'm going to take a three minute break. That's one piece. All right. So we need to do that three times or more. And so in my example, let's say we do five rounds of that. So we do five rounds of 60 seconds on three minutes of rest. <clears throat> then we would do a 10 minute rest. And this is between blocks. And then we would repeat the same thing over again. We would do 60 on, three minutes off, five rounds. And what we have right here, that is a 50 minute session. And it's gonna feel like you haven't done a lot, to be honest. I mean, it will hurt. It'll suck, but that, that's only, uh, you know, 
what is it? Five minutes worth of work the first time. And then five minutes worth of work the second time you did 10 total minutes uh, worth of work in an hour long training session, assuming you have like a, a warm up and a cool down here. And so that is like glycolytic 101, an example of programming, but there's a lot more to unpack than there is with like aerobic stuff. Uh, and Joe, you know, you can, you can chime in here, but, um, one of the, the biggest things I'd like for people to know, um, is glycolytic is a pay to play energy system. Almost anybody can operate in the lower, um, creatine phosphate zone, the phosphagen energy system, and almost anybody can operate in the, um, aerobic zone oxidative, but that's not necessarily the, the same truth in glycolytic. There has to be a base level of strength to be able to put the unnecessary power output to be in the designated glycolytic range. And so let me give you an example. If I have Betty, who decided she wanted to start training with me today, and she just wanted to do what I'm doing, and I said, well, I'm doing glycolytic intervals today. And she's like, cool, sounds good. What are we doing? And I said, I'm doing 60 seconds off, three minutes off for five rounds. And so me and Betty get on the airdyne. I do my 60 seconds. I'm going 90%. I feel like death. I want to throw up after. It's horrible because I'm strong enough to put put out the power to do so. Betty just strolls on the airdyne for 60 seconds. And then she's like, I don't know what his problem is. And I also don't know why we're resting so long. There is no magic to the amount of time here. There's no magic to 60 seconds on three minutes off. The magic is in the power output. Now, going back to the Betty example, she also might be like, you know what? I do want to try really hard. I want to mimic his intensity. So she's going to try it, but she's not fit enough or strong enough to produce 90% power for 60 seconds. And so she tries to go all out, but she's really done in about 15 seconds. And then she just kind of moves the rest of the 45 seconds. Again, we're not in, she may have hit glycolytic in those first 15 seconds, but she's not glycolytic that whole time. And so the biggest point here is the, the power will be, um, the time is di dictated by the fitness level and how long they can hold the duration of power output. And you just kind of know where that is. Um, I always brief to athletes and tell them like, notice and note where you lost power. And the biggest thing that we track and that we preach in our programming is sustainability and repeatability. So if I'm hitting, if I'm going 60 seconds on three minutes off on an airdyne and I get X amount of calories or Watts, like whatever you're, you're tracking for power. And that's the same every single round, round one, round two and round three, round four, but round five is in the, in the dumps. But then I get that 10 minute rest. I go to the second block. I'm good for the first one, but then they're all downhill from there you've kind of lost your power. And to be honest, in my opinion, you're losing the benefit of the training. So it would be better in my opinion, instead of continuing that training session as programmed, it would be to lower the amount of time you're spending on to match the amount of power uh, or the amount of work that you had uh, allotted or raise that up, whatever, whichever one you're trying to, to achieve. Um, so yeah, that that's a lot on glycolytic. Joe, I haven't let you talk at all, man. What, what are your thoughts on, on glycolytic, um, when we're talking about practical application? It is definitely a level up kind of conditioning that you need to work up to. And because like you mentioned, you physically have to be able to do it, but also mentally it, you, you go into a kind of a dark place and it really sucks during, and you also need to, to realize that, okay, you are not doing that much work. You need to actually push yourself to do it because you have so much rest in between. And I think that's one of the hardest things for a lot of people is because you really have to go into these high intensity zones. And we always, we, we do preach a lot about not going high intensity all the time. This is very intentional, high intensity with the, which is also why there's so much rest because you need to be able to keep that level of intensity and, and, you know, somewhat of consistency. There's going to be fall off when it comes to, when it comes to this type of work, but it, it is intentional. High intensities is one way to kind of think of it. Yeah. And so then when we look at practical programming implementation, this doesn't need to be weekly. It could be, it could be weekly if you have a specific reason for training that glycolytic pathway. So glycolytic training is great for athletes who, if you know, like you have a work rest ratio, like a, like a football player, you know, um, they, they're typically going hard for let's say 20, 30 seconds. I don't know the, the average length of a play, but let's call it that. 
and then they have, you know, one to three minute rest, depending on how, you know, what's going on in the game. But when you can analyze your sport like that, like how much effort am I putting in for how long? And do I get a built in rest period into the sport? You can start to program energy systems accordingly. But for, for most people out there, uh, guys like you and I, Joe, we are just training this so so we don't lose it basically you know we're not training it for the actual use but it'll be there if we're ever in that kind of life or death situation this is that uh fight or flight response it, it would you know it would help if you need to run away from a bear you're going to be glycolytic you know or dead either one of those um so that's that's the, something you got to think about and again when we're talking about uh glycolytic energy system i don't like i, said, I didn't want to get into the, the fuel sources but it is pr predominantly a sugar uh burn here like it this is why it's not um as effective for uh ketogenic athletes unless you have like a good glycogen store or you'll eventually run out i've done some experiments with this stuff and definitely hit a wall so glycolytic training is very difficult it doesn't need to be done super frequently um it is as joe said a very intentional use of an energy system high intensity because i'm not of the mindset like we're big fans of like zone two and low intensity stuff, but not, we're not saying never go high intensity. You know, we want you to do that at a certain frequency, but you need to be mindful of it with glycolytic. There is a cost. There is a high metabolic demand and metabolic cost. So if you're not recovering properly, getting enough sleep, all those things, this is the type of training that will just run you into the ground and, you know, start to diminish rather than add to your health and longevity. So you, be very careful with this one. I really feel like the glycolytic is playing with like a, a loaded gun. I feel like if if you're not um, if you're not careful with how the frequency of your programming over the course of a month, your actual implementation of the programming in a training session, um, how you prescribe it to different fitness levels, um, I think that it there it pre it presents a lot of challenges that you need to take into account. And I don't say that about the other energy systems because you can just kind of like whatever, like mess around, get close enough and you'll be fine. But if you're actually nailing the glycolytic system every single time and you're doing too much, it's going to be too taxing um, on the CNS. This, this can cause hormonal problems, overtax the thyroid. Uh, you can start to get overtraining syndrome, all these kind of things. And this is why we crap on high intensity done daily uh, all the time because like training your glycolytic pathway just over and over and over and over and over and over again every single day um there's not really any proof that that's like a of high benefit what what's being proven more it more uh, more and more so is just aerobic base uh strength training and then this kind of stuff occasionally but that's it be careful with this one guys fairly easy to program but again pay attention to that power output uh because there's no magic in the 60 seconds on three minutes off and to be honest, sometimes you might need a lot more rest than that. It depends on how hard you go. And the more advanced the athlete, the more taxing these uh, sessions become. Like a, like Joe and I hate a 2,000 meter row. And those, those are typically more like in the seven minute range. But, and you're like, well, that's outside the three minute. I, I have my own theories about glycolytic being able to extend further than three minutes, or you held glycolytic f for like a full solid, like four minutes and then it drops to aerobic and then you're at a aerobic threshold or, and so anyway, I, I don't want to unpack everything all at once, but the more advanced you get, the more you start to just like really not want to do it. That's how, you know, you're probably doing glycolytic correctly because it's almost like getting slapped in the face or like punched in the stomach, whatever you don't want to have happen to you. And so when you walk into the gym, knowing you're about to have that happen, there should be a little bit of like anxiety because it's that painful. And if it's not that painful, you are probably doing it incorrectly. On the 2K row, four minutes is probably where I hit a wall. And then the last three minutes is just survival. Yeah, that's and that's what I'm saying. Like, we probably, you, I think if you're well-trained, you could probably push that glycolytic pathway, in my opinion, out past three minutes. But then, because this isn't, all of these, like, time zones are just, like, scientific averages, right? That, like, mm -hmm. have been taken from studies. But, like, that doesn't mean you can't take it out further. Um, but then I feel the same way. It's just like you're doing everything you can to maintain that same power output for the last part of the row. Yeah. And it's, it's awful. And then how long do you want to rest after an all out seven minute row? It's like significant amount of time. 24 hours. Yeah. Like I don't want to do that again for a while. All right, man, that's it for this one. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, we'd love for you to subscribe so you can know when new videos are coming out. 
Uh, and then like the channel, leave us a comment, give us some feedback for all of you listening on your pod, favorite podcast player. If you give us a, uh, you know, five-star view, positive comment, we would really appreciate that one. Thanks for uh, watching or listening guys. For listening to the garage gym athlete podcast. If you want to learn more, go to garagegymathlete.com. You can learn about our training. Let us send you a copy of our book, the garage gym athlete, or you can even get featured on the garage gym athlete podcast. Thanks for listening.